My name is Amanda Smith and I am from Utah in the United States. My family is a mixed family. Uh, my mom is from Georgia, that's the southern region of the United States, and my father is actually from Canada. Um, but they met in Utah to go to Brigham Young University, that is the Mormon University in Utah. Uh, most of, both of my parents um, were Mormons at the time, um, and unfortunately when I was young they got divorced and my mother remarried. Um, to the man who raised me who was from El Salvador. Um, so I had a mixed race background. Um, I identified as a Latina. I had a quinceanera, which is um, their big birthday party that they have um, for girls when they turn 15. And I got to wear a poofy dress and <laughs> everything, and alhamdulina. Um, I have three little brothers. One is my full blood brother, and, and the other two are from my stepdad, but they're all just my siblings. Um, so um, religiously I was raised as a Mormon. Um, the majority of the people in Utah are Mormon or Latter-day Saints. Um, and uh, I was very religious when I was young. I was very active in my church. Um, I was always um, offering to help. I got what's called the Personal Progress Award. It's this um, big project that all the teenage girls have to do. You have to do seven 70 hour long research and, and service projects in order to get this special award and I was the only one in my age group who had gotten it. Um, I was very studious when I was young as well. Um, I read the Book of Mormon on my own when I was about 14 um, and uh, the Book of Mormon is their text that they have in addition to the Bible. So I would say I was very religious, however that started to change when I was a teenager. Mormons have four main books. They have the Bible, the Book of Mormon, what's called the Doctrine and Covenants, which you can kind of think of as like hadiths. Um, they're stories about their prophet, Joseph Smith, and they also contain laws about how to do some of their ordinances and practices. And the last book they have is called um, The Pearl of Great Price, which they believe was translated from um, an Egyptian scroll and contains more details about um, some of the other prophets that are not in the Bible. So I, I was very religious um, as a young teenager. So when I was 14, when I read the Book of Mormon on my own, it was a very uplifting experience for me. I was really into it and it uh, has some very powerful, very interesting stories in that book. Um, but things started to change a little bit um, when I started to read the New Testament. And I found in the New Testament, right in the beginning, is the Sermon, in the Mount, sermon on the Mount, um, which is a very famous sermon where Nabi Isa um, gets on a mountain and gives this sermon to these Jewish people. And it's where he um, has his most famous lines, like, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who mourn that. Um, and as I was reading it, I felt like, you know, I feel like I've just read this somewhere. Where have I read this? And I realized I had read it in the Book of Mormon. So near the end of the Book of Mormon, they believe that um, Nabi Isa salam, appeared in, in this, the Americas and was teaching the Jewish, the, um, the people here about the faith and things like that. And he essentially gives them the Sermon on the Mount. And when you read in near the back of the Book of Mormon where this happens, it's almost exactly word for word what is written in the King James Version of the Bible. And as a 14 year old, I realized that that didn't really make any sense because the Book of Mormon, they believe, is translated directly into English from the early 1800s from what they call the language of the Egyptians. It's never really specified what language of the Egyptians specifically, but the language of the Egyptians directly into English. And they also talk about how the Bible has undergone a lot of translations from translations from translations. Um, lots of things have been changed and edited. And so having that knowledge of the Bible, I realized there's no way that a text directly translated into that time of English could not be almost exactly word for word of a story from the Bible that's been taken from a translation from a translation from a translation into English that was spoken several hundred years earlier. Um, so that was a big blow to me, but I didn't really know how to handle that. And I would try to ask questions, but the society there, because everyone there is LDS, um, it's very hush-hush, and people are, are really discouraged from asking questions. Um, 
I also had a few other issues, like my understandings of the relationship we're supposed to have with Jesus. Um, what Mormons teach is a little different from mainstream Christians. So they believe that Jesus is our literal brother, that Jesus has a wife, and that before we came to this world, that we were all born as spirit children, and Jesus is our literal brother. Um, and they do believe that Jesus died for our sins, and they do believe in the virgin birth. Um, and so they, they do praise him, and he does have like an extra high sort of station within Mormonism belief, but he's also your literal brother. And so it, that relationship didn't make sense to me and didn't really add up. And I really struggled to understand things like why someone would need to die for God to forgive your sins. Why can't God just forgive you? And if this guy is my literal brother, then how come it's even necessary for him to have this extra station, yet my other brother... It just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And when I would ask questions, no one could really explain to me wh what this relationship is supposed to be like, why it's that way. I never got a very good answer. And so that's what started to trigger me towards beginning to question my faith. And uh, because the society there, everyone there is Mormon, um, and it's, it's very closed off, I thought that the reason I was having doubts in the Mormon faith was because I was a bad person, because I wasn't good enough, because I listened to that song that says the one bad word, and so my whole soul was just corrupted, and it was my fault. And I went through this period of really low self-esteem.